Third speaker will be Ms. Aya Shabbi, is an award-winning Pan-African activist. She also sits on the board of directors of Civicus World Alliance for Citizen Participation. I now give the floor to Ms. Shabbi. Shabbi, you have the floor. So the story of Tunisia is the story of a group of people who are living under an umbrella believing uh, that that umbrella is the sky until one day someone uh, made a hole in the umbrella to show the people the real sky. So politicians, uh, policy makers and decision makers gathered around tables discussing and planning and debating how to close that hole. And the whole of the umbrella is Tunisia's success story led by young people, um, but the elder political elite uh, is trying to fill in the vacuum with um, traditional structured uh, policies. Under the umbrella, the young people or young Tunisians were uh, living, trying to use new ways or new forms of activism. But again, the older generation um, moved Tunisia forward with some part of the political elite and left behind an emerging political generation. And this is why young people more and more have become disengaged completely from political life. In 2011, I was 23 years old when we toppled uh, or overthrew Ben Ali's regime and we dreamt at the time of creating a youth assembly that will decide the democratic transition of the country we proposed and pushed for uh, a youth constitutional body that will serve as an advisory um, council for the Constituent Assembly, the MPs. The first two to three years, young people were engaged in politics and pushing hard and trying. But today, after six years, we ended up with uh, 89 years old president and 41, 42 uh, years old uh, head of government, even though he's the youngest among the previous four uh, prime ministers. I will mention three main challenges facing uh, Tunisian youth today and three main opportunities and maybe that would relate to youth around the world. It's not only a Tunisian case. Since 2013, the National Observatory uh, on Youth Statistics show that only 6% of Tunisian youth are involved in public affairs, 2% in political parties and 4% in civil society. Why? because young people do not trust state institutions. Um, and the statistics show that particularly the police institution because of police violence, the government because of government disappointment, and the national media and press because of its uh, politicization. On the other hand, the statistics show that 80% of Tunisian youth trust uh, religious organizations, the local imam and the military. And this really explains why young people are engaged actually politically, but through other means of civic events or protests, but not uh, or avoiding completely through um, institutional instruments like political parties and civil society organizations. This is the first challenge. The second challenge, many of the different states, um, maybe some of the states are present here um, and who have NGO offices in, in Tunis or who have youth or who have uh, funding programs for Tunisian NGOs focused uh, on the last five years supporting uh, organization and Tunisian youth on youth political participation and um, leadership, political leadership. But political leadership is a practice. And if we do not have the legislation and their execution to be implemented, if we do not have youth quotas representation, then what, what the training is for? And I've witnessed that from many of my friends who've been running for office, who've been in political parties, who, who had these trainings, but who were faced by mistrust um, and uh, disillusionment basically from the political parties and completely disengaged. The third point is we talk a lot about young people being engaged in institutions. Why don't we talk about changing institution or institution changing themselves? Um, one of the examples is the Ministry of Youth of Sports and Youth, uh, which I find problematic. Youth are always coined with sports or music. Why we do not have uh, youth coined with the Ministry of Employment? Why we do not have 
youth kind with the Ministry of Development and Planning because that's the institution where we can influence the national planning and the allocation of national budget. And beside all of that, youth have to be mainstream in all the ministries and not having a Ministry of Youth and Sports. And not, that's not only in Tunisia, that's in many countries. Um, I'll move to opportunities because I'm very optimistic. So the first opportunity I find is our constitutional rights. Uh, we have a milestone in Tunisia that we built, which is our progressive constitution. With the efforts of civil society, of political parties, and of youth collectives, social media pressure, street pressure, we succeeded to um, lower the presidency um, candidacy requirement to 35 years old and the parliamentarian for 23 years old. And these are great achievements, but we need to move from legislation to um, executive framework. Uh, and for that, we need key stakeholders. And I believe in this room, many people are involved in the discussion with Tunisian governments or other governments. And I think we need to stress on supporting um, the execution of these frameworks. The second opportunity I find is elections. Even though the statistics, statistics around the world show that electoral violence is very high when uh, it's a young democracy. Uh, or a democratic transition because the opponents do not accept the results. But in Tunisia, we did not witness, we, we witnessed some of the violence, we witnessed political assassinations, but compared to other countries, especially in Africa, um, what happened in Kenya, recently in Gabon and other countries, we still rate the lowest. And I think um, even though 2% only of Tunisian youth have voted in the last election, 2014. So the rest of the youth could have been manipulated as political thugs. But I think what prevented, or one of the reasons that prevented that, is that youth have been engaged as watchdogs, uh, monitoring, counting, tribulation, uh, reporting, journalists. They have been even raising awareness about voting, even though they didn't vote. So I think... Um, and I agree with Ahmed when he said the voting, the democracy is not just the voting year or the voting day, but to also prevent some of the violence during the voting year, we need to engage you somehow so, so they are not left to politicians to be manipulated. The third um, opportunity is again mentioned before, I think by the delegation of Peru, and raised uh, in, in multiple occasions the quotas. And we have an opportunity in Tunisia with upcoming uh, local municipal elections and we we have a constitutional right that youth have to have representation in the local elections but we, d we still do not have quotas or parity as we had with gender we have gender parity in our ele electoral lists I think young people have even uh, an Im a more important role to play in decentralized government governance in these local councils um, and local municipal elections but with that I think political parties have to review their law by including youth in the central structures and not as just youth wings. I had a friend who, who was aspiring to be a politician, who even aspires to be the first female president of Tunisia, um, and she was climbing the ladder within the party, and then one of the leaders of the party told her, you go build your career for 50 years and then come back, because we will never nominate you uh, on behalf of the party. So this is the kind of rhetoric we're faced when we, we try to engage in, in politics. The final uh, opportunity I find is civil society. With the apparent shrink of civil society, I think it remains uh, a vibrant, a crucial space for young people. And throughout the last six years in Tunisia and elsewhere, we've seen the creativity of youth in holding government accountable through mobile applications, through online monitoring platforms, through uh, artistic expression, street art, through rap songs, condemning corruptions, and so forth. And, and these um, formal and non-formal, especially non-formal groups, non-formal movements need to be supported by international community to continue to, to create. To conclude, um, I think we all agree that depriving youth from a proper representation leads to reducing the quality of good governance. Um, so candidacy, age, quotas and representation, but also both generations need to start collaborating and trust each other's skills and competencies. Uh, in Tunisia today, we live in a critical moment, as critical as 2011, uh, the, the revolution year, I think, which will define the next five to ten years. 
and we need the international community support to reinforce legislation to ensure youth representation and to support local governance. And even though the hole in, on the, in the umbrella is Tunisia's success story, it remains Tunisia's experience and should not be taken as a model in the region because we're far away, we have a long way to go to claim that we have achieved the goals of revolution. Thank you.